We are gonna go to the market, which I like a lot. I don't really go there anymore since since it's a bit far from the place where I live right now. But when I used to live in the town, I went there all the time. Also, it's Saturday and the market is the best on Fridays and Saturdays because they have a lot of sellers and you can find everything. And then after that, in the afternoon, I think we are gonna go on a little hike because the weather is so good today. My sister came for a visit and we are planning to go on a hike to... We basically have to drive through all the southern shore to get there because it is located on the east side of the island. We are going to go on a hike to the lost village of Sao Miguel, at least this is how they kind of call it here. There were people living in the village for more than a hundred years. Around 200 people lived there, but then they abandoned it because it was a little bit difficult to access it. Today, some locals use the abandoned village for farming. There are all kinds of fruit trees and banana trees and pineapple plants. So I went outside and then it started to rain pretty bad so now I'm just like chilling here in this little cute uh, barbecue place. But anyway, the other day I read an article on how all these drugs impacted the life on the island. Before all these drugs came to the island, people just kind of, you know, lived their lives. They were raising cattle and making teas and dedicating themselves to agriculture and fishing. And then in 2001, the arrival of all these cocaine kind of turned the life on the island upside down. On the 6th of June 2001, locals from the northwestern tip of Sao Miguel saw a yacht near the cliffs. None of the villagers had ever seen a boat of this size floating so close to that part of the coast where the sea was shallow and the tides were strong. They supposed it was just a sailor who had got lost. But it turned out that the man who was sailing the boat was killed because in the previous three months he apparently crossed the Atlantic twice. He sailed from the Canary Islands to Venezuela and then back and this time he was gonna sail to Spain but there were some difficulties and he realized that he has to stop because if not he was not gonna make it to Spain so he stopped on Sao Miguel and the thing is that he could not go directly to the port because if he did 
the port authorities would check his boat and they would find all these drugs. He started to look for a place where to hide it and apparently all this cocaine was in hundreds of packages and the packages had a size of a building brick. So what he decided to do was to secure all those packages with nets and chains and he put everything under the water. And he went to the nearest port in a small fishing village on the north of the island. Well after that the problem was that the weather was bad and the ocean was rough so all these packages just somehow untied and they started to wash ashore. The next day some of these packages were found by a man who often fished in that area. So he found a lot of packages on the shore and from some of them there was this substance leaking out which kind of looked like flour and he called the police. Then within hours apparently almost 300 packages were registered. After that many other were found and some people reported it to the police but some people didn't report it to the police. This is how many people became dealers and they just started to transport cocaine across the island. There were even headlines on the newspapers how police fears the mass dealing of cocaine since before there was not so much of cocaine on the island. The dealer who arrived to the island by boat was put into a prison in Ponta Delgada from where he managed to escape. He climbed up the wall later on he was found again and of course it's a more complex and it's a longer story but this is just kind of the main point 